Welcome to Film 5D, the show about everything film and video with the Sony A7S II. I'm your host, Aaron Hammack, and this week I talk about the Aperture Lightstorm LED lighting solution. So, just like last episode where I talked about my audio upgrade to the Sennheiser MKH416, this week I'm going to frame this episode around my newly upgraded lighting system. Now, I recently upgraded to the Lightstorm series of LED lights from Aperture, which if you don't already know about this brand, basically they're known for making LED lights that are both small in size, yet powerful in output, and perhaps more importantly, very high in quality in terms of CRI. And if you don't know what CRI is, basically it just stands for Color Rendering Index, which is essentially a light's ability to accurately render colors measured against the sun's light, which is maxed out at 100 CRI. But this episode is not going to be a full review of this lighting kit. The two LS1Ss that I'm talking about today are almost two years old at this point. And while the C120D is brand new, like it just came out, you know, in the last couple weeks, there's already plenty of reviews of this kit here on YouTube. Though I might do a review in the future when I've had more of a chance to use them in real world situations, especially outside. Instead, I'm going to be comparing this setup to two other kits that I've used throughout the years. One is the setup that I've used for the majority of the episodes here on this channel since 2012. The Lowell Halogen Lighting Kit, which includes two TOTA floodlights, an Omni light that makes for a great key, a Rifa EX44, which I use as a fill, and finally a Pro Light, which I've always used as a hair or rim light. Just a quick pro and con for this kit, the, on the pro side, these things are tiny compared to LEDs. This whole kit with all the stands, accessories, and cables fits into a bag smaller than most suitcases. Another pro is the cost. I'll talk more specifically about price comparison later, but this is definitely the most affordable setup of the three that I'm gonna be talking about today. Another pro is the versatility. These lights come in all different shapes, sizes, and uses. And finally, these lights have a very high CRI of about 95 out of 100. And now on to the cons. The most obvious and the reason most people have been moving away from these setups, the heat. These lights are very hot. They're hot to the touch and also, and perhaps more importantly, they're hot on the talent causing them discomfort and even making them sweat. And honestly, I can't even think of another con. That's just the one that warrants the upgrade to LED lights for so many people already. But I guess another con of a halogen light is that they do draw a ton of power and there's been plenty of times with these on location where I've tripped circuit breakers during shoots. So then why didn't I just get LEDs from the start you might ask? Well, until recently, in like the last couple of years, the output and quality of LED lights has been questionable at best, especially at a reasonable price point. Most LEDs are closer to 80 CRI than they are the 95 plus CRI like my new Aperture Light Storms are rated for. Now this leads me to my second light kit that I'll be testing today, two Came TV 1024 bulb bicolor lights along with the CD 1000WS LED Fresnel light. Some of the pros of these lights compared to the Aperture Lightstorm LEDs are that one, these are bicolor, so a bit more convenient than my daylight 5500 Kelvin Aperture Lightstorms. And even though bicolor means that you can basically go anywhere from 3200 to 5600K on these lights, this does mean that you're actually only getting 512 bulbs worth of power at either end of the spectrum if you're you know, not mixing the two. So not nearly as powerful compared to the 1,536 LED bulbs you get with the light storms. Also, these things are about 50% cheaper than the light storm, so that's another positive. But I can tell you right now that I would never again buy bicolor LED lights. Not only do they put out half the power to their single color counterparts, but also the quality is questionable at best, especially when you mix the colors. And onto the cons, the first one is the size. Out of all the lights I'm testing today, these are by far the largest and heaviest, and they also have the lowest CRI. The quality is you know, pretty low, uh, coming in at around 88 to 92 CRI, which is good for LEDs, but not quite as good as the light storms, which is what I'm gonna be talking about for the rest of the episode. Now I'm also gonna be giving a quick pro and cons of the Aperture light storm setup at the end of this video, but first I figured I'd do some real world tests with these kits and see how they stack up against each other. Now I'm gonna be adding soft boxes and umbrellas to kind of diffuse the light on all three kits to give kind of a traditional three point lighting setup with you know, a key on this side, a fill on this side, and then the hair or rim light's gonna be back there. And the main thing I wanna figure out is how the color rendering of each kit compares to the high quality light storms. 
Now I'm gonna set the subject in front of a white sheet that will be lit by some diva lights that I use in my studio to light my background and my green screen. So this test will be purely based on the lighting of the subject herself in an interview scenario where you only have three lights. Also, I'm not gonna be doing any post-processing with these clips and each setup will be custom balanced to an 18% gray card so you can get the best idea possible of the quality of these lights straight off the camera. I'm also gonna give you the price of each three-point lighting setup with the lights only, not, in, not including your know, stands, accessories, or anything like that, to give you the best idea of how they compare price-wise. Now we'll start with the Aperture Lightstorm setup, coming in at about $2,035 for the lights only, which as you can see are all daylight balanced, so we'll need to add some CTO gels to these to balance them for the studio. There we go which will result in a bit less output from the lights, but for you know this test, I think we'll be fine you know, when it comes to that, because they're already so much brighter than the other lights. Now I'm gonna add the diffuse soft boxes to both the LS1S lights for a softer light. Also, we have the new C120D, which is daylight balance version of the 120T. So let's get to the test. Okay, so here we can see that this setup does a really good job of filling out her face. It has, you know, a nice even lighting setup that is both powerful and excellent at accurately representing the skin tones. All right, next let's look at the Kame TV setup coming at about $1,300 for the lights only. Now I'll be adding soft boxes to the Bicolor 1024s and the Fresnel will have a CTO filter on it to balance it to the studio because that one is daylight balance. Now these lights are significantly less powerful than the light storms, I'm just gonna tell you that right now, which are about three times brighter. So I'm gonna do my best to match to the previous tests, but we'll see how that goes. Let's go to it. So with this setup, it was harder to match the Kame TV LEDs to the other lights because they just aren't nearly as powerful. What's the result of that? Well, we have a much more evenly lit subject with less contrast than the first setup. Also, if you look close to the forehead and hair, there's a tiny bit of green tint and discoloration. And finally, let's take a look at the Lowell Halogen Kit coming at around 550 bucks for the three lights I'll be using in this test. And the first light will be the Omni with a reflector umbrella as the key, the Rifa EX44 softbox light as the fill, and the Pro Light as the backlight. Now let's get to the test. Of all the setups, this one probably makes the skin look the shiniest and least soft. Also, there's a distinct difference between the color of the light between the key and the fill. So there's gonna be a bit of variability there. Okay, so let's just do a quick recap of all three setups side by side. Now, as you can see, the Kame TV LEDs are clearly the loser when it comes to output, though I am impressed with how well my Lowell lights did when it came to the color reproduction compared to the light storms. However, there's that con I mentioned before that's just a deal breaker for most people these days. Halogen lights are just too hot. You can't even touch them within 20 minutes after turning them on without using, you know, special gloves. Meanwhile, the light storms are high quality, high output, and low heat, whereas the Kame TV LEDs are just too low on the output side and there is a little bit of discoloration. It's also worth noting that, you know, it's not a perfect test because I am using different, you know, diffusers and soft boxes and umbrellas for each setup, but these are the setups that I personally used when I would film with them. So I'm comfortable you know, doing the test that way to see what gives the best result for my um, situation. In fact, I wanna do another quick test where I compare both the quality and the output of the two LED kits. Here we have the Kame TV on the left and the Lightstorm on the right. This is both lights set to 5500K, so the Kame TV is only using 512 LEDs versus the 1536 LEDs of the Lightstorm. So right off the bat, you can see how much more powerful the Lightstorms are. Not to mention that the light storms have a 25 degree beam angle and are a little bit more focused with a nicer fall off than the Kame TV LED lights. However, to make this test a bit fairer, I'm gonna set the Kame TV lights to about 4400K so that all the LEDs are being used at the same time. And yet the light storms still seem to be about two times, if not you know, three times more powerful, which is just crazy when you consider how much smaller the light storms are when you compare them to the Kame TV LEDs. And all of this is important because, you know, if you can place your key light further away from your subject, it allows you to shoot in more ways, especially outside when you're constantly fighting against the power and the quality of the sun. With that being said, let's take a look at my pros and cons of the Aperture light storms. Number one, these have a very high CRI like I've mentioned before. Um, the two LS1S lights are rated at about 95 plus, and the C120D is rated even higher at 97, which is just crazy for LEDs when you think about it. 
Number two, these are super powerful. Since this version of the Lightstorm has a beam angle of 25 degrees and the bulbs are super close together in a honeycomb-like formation, they are able to fit 50% more bulbs than the cam TV lights in a smaller surface area. Now, if you know anything about LEDs, this normally isn't possible because they just get so hot when they're that close together like this. But since the design of the light storms is the way it is, you know, it's pretty brilliant. Basically, the controls are on a separate device that you, that you hang off of a stand, and the heatsink is actually on the back of the lights. You know, you can see the fins here as the heatsink, you know, picking up that heat so that you can have those bulbs nice and close together and get, you know, three times the output. Which leads me to my third positive for these lights. They run cool compared to something like, you know, my halogens. They have, you know, a pretty good throw range given the angle of the LEDs is, you know, 25 degrees. So these lights can be placed several feet away and still shed light on your subject. In fact, there's a Fresnel mount accessory that I definitely recommend for the C120D to give that light a little bit more throw on softer edges, which you can see here. This gives the C120D a nice fall off along the edges and this type of look has been used for ages in the film industry. But moving on to the cons of this kit. Number one, these are expensive. I mean, if you're just comparing them to, you know, regular LED lights, these are on average, you know, two times more expensive and four times more expensive than my halogen setup. So if you're just starting out, this might not be the light kit for you. And this is more of, you know, a professional upgrade kit in my opinion. Though if you are just starting out, you could start with the Aperture Amaran line, which have, you know, a smaller and more portable form factor and are much more affordable. They have two of those currently available, one with about, you know, 500 LEDs and one with about 670 LEDs. I don't know off the top of my head. But they do have a new one coming out, you know, any day now called T8888, which means it has 888 LEDs. LEDs honeycombed on a much more portable and small kit. And they still, of course, have that C high CRI that you know you get with the light storms. The second and honestly last con I have about this light storm kit is the portability. I'm gonna have you know four to five bags to carry for all three lights and accessories and stands and you know everything you have. Whereas for the low light setup, I could get away with a single bag for all five lights, you know, all my stands and all my accessories. Overall, I love these lights. I'm happy to finally jump, you know, officially into the world of LEDs and get some high quality ones. You know, as always, I have all the products I've mentioned in this video linked in the description below for you to check out or buy if you want to support the channel. Now, I might do a review on these in the coming months if you guys show some interest, so just let me know. But that's it for this week. Hopefully this helped if you've been considering a lighting upgrade like me. If you enjoyed this content, you know, please like the video. If you have any questions, send them on Twitter at filmin 5 d and I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the logo on screen for updates on new content when it's released. If you want to learn more about the Aperture Light Storm lights, check out my blog on my website. Also, take a look at my last video about the Sennheiser MKH416 high-end resolution shotgun mic. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you next time.